So why does it seem like men use women at a very high rate? And today we're going to talk about five possible reasons. And I think before we jump into this, we have to rec we have to kind of address what does it mean to be used? What does it mean to be used? The way I view it is if someone's uh, capabilities, their willingness, their intentions actually are in contrast to their actions, okay, or contrast. But there's a big difference between actually being used and feeling used. And I think today's conversation is going to help kind of ferret this out a little bit because a lot of people, particularly women, feel as though they've been used by men. And oftentimes this implies actually victim consciousness. Now, I'm not saying this is an absolute and I'm not suggesting there aren't people out there who have actually been used by someone, In but were they used in a nefarious way or was it a byproduct of what I'm going to talk about today? Now, I'm just going to share with you a post I had on Facebook, or excuse me, on Instagram and Facebook. By the way, there's a link below to follow me on Instagram. Have you ever spoken to someone who couldn't shut up about being hurt or being used in a previous relationship? While I can appreciate that everyone has a way of processing the ending of a treasured relationship, one is better served in taking ownership of their part, even if it's only 3%, because otherwise it comes off as playing the victim card. Ideally, if one has experienced a painful relationship, especially if they gave their power away to another person, seeking a trained counselor to process to process is far healthier than taking to social media or to some new love interest to talk about one's grievances. In fact, TikTok is riddled with humans complaining about the littlest of indiscretions in the dating landscape, to, which to me is a sign of an unevolved person seeking attention. Taking ownership in one's role in any relationship from an empowered place is the path to healing. And when that ownership is all that's really discussed in any future relationship, that's when I think you should begin dating. Now, I said a lot there. Oh, by the way, the meme that goes along with it says, victim consciousness says they used me, while victor consciousness says they were part of my journey, okay? Why this is so critically important talking about this concept of being used, is when you're coming at it from a place, this other person used me, then in that moment, I believe you're in victim conscious. Now, that's not to say that many of you have experienced abusive relationships. I recognize that. But my opinion has always been, and tell me if you agree or disagree with this, if you don't have to call a doctor, an attorney, or a policeman. If you don't have to call a doctor, attorney, or policeman, you have a part to play in this relationship. By the way, I got that from Dr. Pat Allen, okay? Doctor, attorney, or a policeman. But I think it's challenging because oftentimes we feel used for the littlest of things. And let me give you an example. You had a man come on strong. He loved bombed you. He basically professed his love. He said, you are unlike any other. You are the unicorn. And I want you to know you barely knew this man and you slept with him. And then shortly after physically being intimate with him, he has an excuse that says, I'm not ready for a relationship. This is the, one of the most common things that happen in the realm of feeling used, okay? But we have to look at that. Maybe the person is just full of shit. He wants a relationship, but you're just not the one, and he's not willing to tell you you're not the one, okay? And then there are other men that, um, you know, what was I said for this? True for some, but the excuse they believe. But I think the challenge is, for some men, they're not ready for a relationship. And, and the problem is they, they believe that the next person they meet will tip the balance in, their scale, in the scales of wanting a relationship. And this is the dilemma we face uh, in our dating marketplace. And I'm going to address this in our very first conversation and one of the five possible reasons. Because here's the rub. What's the definition of a relationship? 
You see, context means everything. Context means everything. And the dilemma I see it is for a variety of reasons. I think this is one of our biggest issues is that the conversation around relationship or, or what, there's, what they desire in a relationship, there's little or no context. Okay, so the first reason, possible reason is there's no shared context. There's no shared context. What I mean is the word relationship or commitment might mean different things to different people. So for example, you might say, you might be thinking, I want a relationship. And he goes, oh, I want a relationship too, okay? Now you're thinking, well, I'd like to spend two, three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either uh, moving in together or getting married. That might be the context of the word relationship to you. Now, I don't mean this after the first, second, or third date, but the minute two people are physically intimate with someone, the only way you're going to build something of value is to spend a significant time together. So your context might be here. His context might be here. Oh, relationship. Oh, what it means to me is Oh, I see you at my beck and call when I feel like seeing you. That might be his verbiage for a relationship and yours is here and his is here. By the way, everything I'm sharing today goes both ways. Women use men, men use women. Let me be clear for any men that are watching right now, this goes both ways. But there's a lot, the, the challenge today why people feel used is because oftentimes they find themselves in either a casual relationship a situationship, a friends with benefits, but they don't really know about it, or they're just hooking up. I think these, these are the predominant relationships that are in our current dating environment. Most everybody is in a casual relationship um, that isn't, you know, like where there's a couple, but they're not married. Now, if you're living together, that's pretty darn close, okay? But for every couple, and I want you to think about this right now, if you are in a relationship with a man and you don't live together, you're not married, it, it's, it's still casual. There is an easy exit clause. There is no firm commitment. There is no commitment of front, in front of witnesses. There is no commitment in front of witnesses. And I think the reason why casual relationships now outnumber serious relationships where people are either moving in together or getting married is because divorce causes a lot of people to become, become gun shy. I think a significant, by the way, since my audience is midlife, which I say is after baby making years and be before retirement, the significant percentage of people are divorced. And I think divorce in and of itself causes men and women to become gun shy. The second most common reason for casual relationships are lifestyle differences. That's right, lifestyle differences. In other words, their lives aren't easily blendable with one another. Maybe they live 30 miles apart. Maybe, um, and they have fully curated lives where they live. That can be a challenge. Maybe one person is still raising children. The other person is semi-retired. I mean, I'm just using a couple of various uh, examples, but lifestyle compatibility is one of the most common reasons why casual relationships are the norm. And the reason why we find casual relationships um, is because most people, men and women alike, want companionship. They want connection. They want sex but they're not really fully capable of committing to one another to blend their lives together. And hence why casual is the predominant relationship. And when you're in, like I said earlier, when a casual relationship, you can leave exit whenever you want. You could literally get into a fight one day and it could be simply over. And you might be thinking you got used because you have all this investment in this person that didn't go anywhere. Now, I just want to say this about I want you to really look back at any time you thought you were used in a relationship, you had been used by a person. Was this really a relationship you were happy with? You know, it fascinates me. Happy couples, people were, okay, happy couples look like this. 
Okay, this is the only way. Okay, this is the predominant definition of a happy couple, according to Jonathan Asley. This is the definition of a happy couple where each person feels like they got the better end of the deal. Let me repeat that, where each person feels like they got the better end of the deal. In other words, they each person puts each other up on some level of pedestal of gratitude. Do you know happy couples? They don't break up. It's only unhappy couples that break up. I've, it's rare to me that a woman who says that they're used was actually in a happy relationship or any significant relationship. It might've been a short-lived experience and you might have felt used, but that's because you went into it with a lack of consciousness, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Number two, a man's or woman's desires to connect, desire to connect outweighs their true capabilities, capacity, and willingness to commit. commit. Let me repeat that. A man's or woman's desires Desire to connect outweighs their capabilities, their capacity, or willingness to commit. In other words, they want closeness. They want connection. They want companionship. They want sex. But their capacity, their willingness, their capabilities of commitment is so darn weak that the minute the relationship has any emotional responsibility, they run from the relationship. And the other person, who is capable of committing, who is willing to commit, feels as though they got used. Now, did they really get used? I don't know if they got used. I just think, by the way, part of human pair bonding, part of human mating is, a, is like the probationary period at a job. The problem is in our case, we don't allow it to be 90 days. We can allow it to be nine years of a probationary period. That's why until two people get married, it's always, until two people get married, every relationship is in a probationary period. Well, okay, those who get live together is at least a step in the right direction. But I'm saying every relationship before marriage is in probation for the most part unless you have really defined, really have had serious conversation defining the relationship. So their desires for connection outweighs their capabilities. And oftentimes that's reason why, uh, possible reason why a man might exit or a woman might exit the relationship. Number three, misalignment or ambivalence. Okay, misalignment or ambivalence. The reason why I put these two together is because men and women alike are basically hooking up into a relationship and that they're either misaligned or they're completely unconscious to, to truly interviewing someone. I'm here to say a lack of proper vetting and interviewing someone of true capabilities of compatibility is one of the primary reasons people feel used. If you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, by the way, please forgive the glare. Okay, most of us adopted a belief that attraction or chemistry is the indicator of relationship success. Relationship success is based on shared values, a shared vision, blendable lifestyles, like I talked about earlier, and emotional maturity and relationship skills which is below the surface. But if all you spent all your time in relationship here and you really didn't vet for compatibility, did you actually get used if you were ambivalent and misaligned with this person? No, the, the whole process of dating is a test drive. The whole process, by the way, I want to even think about this. The whole process of dating is a test drive. The whole, poss the whole process of a relationship is a test drive. Until two people get married, they're, they're literally, they can exit and leave whenever they want. There's no real consequence other than if you live together, you got to hire a mover and move out. Here in California, I do believe there's a, I think it's called the Lee Marvin law, where if you're with someone for 10 years, you might be uh, responsible from a financial perspective for someone. But the reality is, is when two people are misaligned and ambivalent in the process of dating and they didn't do a proper vetting 
to determine compatibility, you got to take ownership. It's my fault I didn't properly vet this person. It's not their fault. It's my fault. All right. Number four, an unhealed or broken man or woman is in delusion about being a quality partner. An unhealed or broken man or woman is in the, in the delusion of being a quality partner. They are either arrogant or ignorant. Folks, I've been saying this for a significant percentage of time. We are swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality. This is my emotional maturity relationship charts. This is not a fact, merely an opinion. I believe 20% of the population has clinical issues, real weak relationship skills, emotional maturity at, at almost a clinical level. And while I say 20% is healthy, I'm being ridiculously generous. I don't believe, I'm not even sure healthy really exists, but I think there's as close as you can get. But I give it a 20% category because this is part of the 80-20 rule. Most everyone is dysfunctional, myself included. I've got issues. I am not a perfectly healed person. But when we have truly unhealed and emotionally wounded people who believe that they're emotionally healthy, for either ignorance or arrogance, it's no wonder a person might feel used. If someone's not capable of being in a relationship, but they are being fully capable of commitment, but they want companionship, connection, and sex, it's incumbent upon us to vet this person as thoroughly as we possibly can before we give our heart to someone. Otherwise, we will feel used. And I'm just drawing attention to that. And the fifth possible reason, and I'm sure there's more than five, but this is just my perception in this conversation, is that there are just a lot of people who do use people. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, they are often self-centric people and they believe, okay, so there is a group of self-centric people who believe that they give so much to others. And yet in relationship, they're actually rather self-centric, narcissistic, self-absorbed. They only think about their own needs. We have a significant percentage of that's that's that clinical category I'm talking about. They're in a they're in a delusion, they're both in a delusion that they're healthy, but worse, they they think because they give to other people that makes them a good person in relationship. You know, very few by the way, in a lot of relationships People are rather selfish. It's about their own needs being, being met. It's rare that we see those couples I talked about where they feel like I got the better end of the deal. In other words, it's rare that we see two givers with one another. It's, I'm not saying it isn't out there. It just appears to be rare because we see so much emotional turmoil in the dating, mating, and relating marketplace. And I'm saddened to even share this because you know, I feel like a pessimist. You know, a lot of us dating and relationship coaches out there, we we are helping you avoid the wrong person. But how many of us are really teaching you how to weed out and find that right person? We're good at telling you what not to accept, but there is no magic bullet. There is no, you know, there is no one little bit of advice that's going to make it so that you meet the perfect person. I mean, that's like the genie in the bottle wishing for it. Now, the best way I approach it is to become a healthy, sovereign human being, which starts with self-love. And if you haven't read my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. It starts by being in your sovereignty and, and doing personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. So whether you achieve a relationship or not, you show up as the best possible person. And we become more of a magnetic attractor to those people. We recognize the wrong people much quicker when we're truly aligned to our sovereignty. We're truly aligned to our sovereignty. And while I'm not in love with the entire aspect of this book, this, uh, there are aspects of the book why men love bitches. And by the way, the bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, ES. There are a lot of 
empowerment concepts in this book. I don't love everything about it, but there's a lot of empowerment. It's probably one of the best empowerment books out there. The problem is there's some game playing in it too. Um, that's why that book coupled with, okay, these two books, read them side by side. Why Men Love Bitches, and then incorporate everything in the Buddha dated, okay? I want you to incorporate everything from this book because that will put you in a state of being a magnetic attractor so you don't have to burn down the haystack. You become electromagnet to attract the kind of relationship you see. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. And I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And by the way, if you want to talk to me, schedule a discovery call with me. There's a link below in the show notes and the first comment as well. Uh, if you'd like to connect with me, if you'd like to join my group called Midlife Love Master, if you want to follow me on Instagram, if you want to get my dating vows, it's all listed below.